members of uh, the Waffen-SS, as did also by members of all other armies. This is what millions of British people feel about it today. This is, this is the anti-Nazi league against the SS in this country. It is scandalous that we allow these people to come into this country into the front of everybody here. Certainly, there is no question of doubt of the bestiality that is now known to all the world. The question is, was that committed by members of the Russian SS? And my answer is no. Being convinced that there are always circumstances in which elite troops are needed, I created in 1923 the Adolf Hitler shock troop. It was made up of men who were ready for revolution and who knew that one day it would come to hard knocks. When I came out of Landsberg prison in 1924, everything was broken up and scattered in rival groups. I told myself then that what I needed was a bodyguard, even a small one. Only 20 men to a city, on condition one could count on them completely, rather than a dubious rabble. It was Maurice, Schreck and Haydn who formed the first group of Tufts in Munich from which the SS originated. But it was under Himmler that the SS became an extraordinary body of men devoted to an ideal, loyal unto death. In his struggle for power, Hitler was convinced that the political problems facing Germany in the 1920s could only be overcome by the Nazi party, which was better organized, better disciplined and more ruthless than its opponents. Politics in the Weimar Republic of the 20s were a very militaristic affair, with all the martial pomp and paraphernalia, the standards, uniforms and brass bands so dear to the hearts of Germany's restless and disgruntled soldiers. The rabble to which Hitler referred was the Nazi party's private army of brown-shirted SA, or stormtroopers, rowdy, uncouth and radical. Hitler could never rely on them absolutely. The selected few chosen to guard Hitler in 1925 were formed into the Schutzstaffel, or SS. When Himmler became leader of the SS in 1929, it numbered about 280 men. My first Eindruck from Himmler. My first impression of Himmler was a great disappointment. I was considerably taller than him and had already been awarded the Iron Cross first and second class and had been an officer in one of the best and oldest regiments of the German army, the Hessian Lifeguard Infantry Regiment in Darmstadt. Himmler had no war decorations whatsoever and he had nothing in common with the front soldier. His whole bearing was a bit sly and unmilitary.